Hello and thank you for taking the time to view this presentation on changes to the National Electric Code for low voltage swimming pool lighting. This presentation was designed specifically for electrical inspectors, but it will also be beneficial to electrical contractors involved in the swimming pool industry. And it will provide you with one source for many of the changes that have occurred since the 1999 code cycle. Let's take a look at what will be covered in this presentation. First of all, we will discuss why NEC changed the code. Then, we will look specifically at Article 680 as it relates to grounding of the lights, GFCI protection, the depths of the lights, and bonding of the light niches, which is the most recent change. Then, we will introduce you to the new Universal Color Logic LED light from Hayward Pool Products, which is UL listed and meets all of the changes in the code. We will also talk about retrofits and why this new LED light is UL listed to be installed into most existing pool niches. And of course, we will provide you with a source for additional information, including a dedicated phone number to call. It was actually the swimming pool industry that started this change in motion. Back in the early 2000s, they got together with UL to discuss a safer, low voltage lighting system. UL agreed that the system that the pool industry suggested was in fact safer and could be installed with less opportunity for installer error. Then it was UL that went to the NEC board and petitioned them to make a change to the code that would allow all plastic, low voltage pool lighting systems to be installed without bonding or grounding of the niches or lights. Before we look at the specific changes to the code, Let's look at why the swimming pool industry was interested in making 12 volt lighting more popular and easier to install. Although there are many jurisdictions in the United States that require 12 volt lighting, the great majority of the United States still uses line voltage lighting, even though 12 volt lighting is safer. Note, it's not that line voltage lighting isn't safe, it's just that 12 volt lighting is safer. However, there have been several good reasons why contractors typically avoided low voltage lighting, and they are listed on this slide. As you look down this slide at these reasons, you will see that it has primarily to do with the cost of the 12 volt lighting system, as well as the labor involved with installing or replacing them. But fortunately, due to technological advances in plastic manufacturing and LED lighting, we can now bring 12 volt lighting products to the marketplace that address all of the problems listed here. Now, let's look at how the code has changed. Although some changes occurred back in the 2002 code cycle, a definition for low voltage was not actually included in the code until 2008, and it continues today in the 2011 edition. You see the item listed in red, number one, 15 volts sinusoidal AC. That is the definition that is applicable to swimming pool lights. The other three definitions listed were added in 2011 and are for applications outside of the swimming pool industry. The first change to the NEC occurred in 2002 and as shown here addressed being able to manufacture and install 12 volt light fixtures without grounding conductors. These are all plastic light fixtures and there are many in the industry today both in halogen quartz lighting and in LED lighting, which you may have seen. This slide is included as a reminder that all transformers in the swimming pool industry should be listed for swimming pool use. That is, you should not go to your local hardware store and pick up a 12 volt transformer and connect it to a swimming pool light. This is primarily because listed swimming pool transformers have separate chambers for the high voltage and low voltage wiring. Now let's look at GFCI protection. Although GFCI protection is required for high voltage swimming pool lighting systems, there are two sections of the code listed here that allow for low voltage lighting systems to be installed without GFCI protection. Therefore, GFCI protection is not required on any listed low voltage lighting product in the pool industry. Certainly in your jurisdiction you may require it, but it is not required by the National Electric Code. Now let's look at the depths of swimming pool lights.
For decades, the National Electric Code had required that all swimming pool lights be located a minimum of 18 inches below water level to the top of the lens. This verbiage was included originally to keep the light away from the chest cavity. They didn't want somebody that might be standing or hanging on the deck in front of the light while talking to somebody on the deck to have the light located right at their chest in the event that the glass lens had a crack in it or that there might be some other current leakage that could affect the heart, especially if the person had a pacemaker. So this was the reason for the 18 inch depth requirement. Well now, with the advent of plastic swimming pool light fixtures and unbreakable plastic lenses, lights can be listed to be installed up to four inches below water level because we do not have the opportunity for lens breakage or for current leakage into the pool that might be damaging to the heart. This minimum dimension of four inches primarily exists to provide adequate cooling of the light and to prevent strobing of the light beam when there is wave action in the pool. The next thing that is addressed as seen at the bottom of this slide is locating lights on the bottom of a pool, spa, or fountain to illuminate a waterfall or other water feature. In the past, any time we wanted to do that, we had to have a cover, some sort of a grate on top of that light to protect somebody from putting their foot through the glass lens or a rock from possibly cracking the lens. Again, with plastic lights, they can be listed as in number two to be used without a guard if they have passed the UL impact test. Now let's look at bonding of the forming shell or niche for a swimming pool light. Because niches all have had some metal in them, they have been required to be bonded to the equipotential bonding grid of the swimming pool with either bonded metal conduit or a number eight copper wire attached to a bond lug on the outside of the niche. And if PVC conduit has been used to connect the niche to the power source, an additional number eight bond jumper has been required to go down the conduit with the light cord and connect to a redundant bond lug inside the niche, as shown in this picture. Now for the biggest change in the National Electric Code, you can see on this slide that any low voltage lighting system that is listed to be installed without grounding is now also exempt from the bonding requirement. So light niches that are part of a low voltage lighting system that is all plastic and so listed can be installed without bonding and you will find that there will be no bonding lugs on the niches. Now let's look at Hayward Pool Products new lighting system that satisfies all of these NEC changes and is the first of its kind in the marketplace. First of all, and for the first time, Hayward Pool Products now has a 300 watt transformer, similar but slightly different than the existing 300 watt transformers in the marketplace. And we will go into more detail on that later. Then, unique to the marketplace, there is a 70 and 140 watt retrofit transformer and a 70 watt transformer for new installations. The plastic forming shell for gunite concrete pools only at this point in time is only two and three quarter inches thick and has no bonding lugs as it does not require bonding. This niche will actually disappear in the wall of a pool and there will be no need to build a rebar cage around it to shoot concrete around it. Then we have the non-conductive sealed polymer luminaire with no serviceable parts. This is the LED light fixture that only draws 65 watts and is totally sealed. This is because there is no need at any time to get into the light itself as the LED bulbs are going to last 20,000 to 30,000 hours or possibly more. When and if the light burns out, the entire fixture would be replaced. Lastly, we have the non-conductive polymer trim ring in various colors to finish the surface look of the light. One of the available trim rings looks very much like stainless steel because pool owners have gotten used to this look in their pool. So, if you go out to a final inspection on a pool with one of these UCL light systems installed, 
and wonder why it has a stainless steel trim ring, I encourage you to do whatever test you like to prove that it is indeed plastic and offers no electrical conductivity. Looking further at the light niche, as you see on this slide, it comes with a compression fitting for a cord lock and water seal. This will prevent water from running back into the conduit. Those of you who have ever seen or had to use underwater epoxy to prevent water from leaking back into the conduit will truly appreciate this feature. As shown here, it comes with a 45 degree 1 inch elbow. There is also a reducer bushing from 1 inch to 3 quarter inch if that is the conduit size being used. As you can see from this slide, there is ample room inside the niche for cord storage. Now cord storage is required by pool standards in order to be able to put the light fixture up on the deck without disconnecting it in the event that it or the pool needs to be serviced. Again, because this is a non-serviceable fixture, a contractor will not have to work on it. But if they were to refinish the inside of the pool, they would want to be able to put it up on the deck. There is room for up to 12 feet of cord storage, so if this light is installed on the bottom of a pool, spa, or fountain, there is adequate storage space to be able to put the fixture up on the deck from those depths. Another unique feature of the UCL light system, you do not need a screw to capture the light fixture into the niche. Rather, it twists lock into the niche. Then a tool is required, along with knowledge of where to insert it, to release the locking mechanism to remove the fixture. This prevents children from removing it. Then to finish the installation, the trim ring twists lock into place on the face of the fixture. There is also a SPA UCL light system, which looks very much like existing SPA light assemblies. However, it is all plastic in construction and therefore can be UL listed for installation without bonding. Now, let's look at Hayward's new 300 watt transformer. It looks pretty much like any other 300 watt transformer in the marketplace with one exception. You see on the slide where it says placeholder for coupler. And we will talk about what that coupler is shortly. The UCL LED light fixture is a 65 watt appliance. So if you did the math and divided 65 into 300, you would say that four UCL lights could be operated by one 300 watt transformer. However, from an operational viewpoint, the number of LED fixtures is limited to three. Now the coupler is an interface between the Hayward ProLogic pool automation system and the UCL lights. This allows a customer who has opted for the automation system to have more control over their lights than they would just by using a switch on the wall. The coupler translates a signal that is sent from the ProLogic pool automation system in the house and tells the light what color to be on or what program to run. And in the case of the 300 watt transformer, a single coupler can identify three individual lights and tell them to be three individual colors or designate each one's moving color in a light show program. It is worth noting here that the UCL light is able to produce 101 different colors and 11 pre-designed light shows. The basic switched UCL light model only allows access to 10 of the colors and 7 of the programs through an interrupt switch circuit. In order to access the remaining colors and shows, or even design new shows, the ProLogic pool automation system is required. This slide shows the wiring of the 300 watt transformer. Like all listed swimming pool transformers, it has two chambers, one on the high voltage side and one on the low voltage side. And it has three low voltage outputs, 12, 13, and 14 volts. However, you will notice on the slide that it says to not use the 12 and 13 volt legs. Instead, the 14 volt output should be used to get as much voltage to the fixture as possible. Then the light controls the voltage internally, boosting it as necessary to its operational voltage, so all lights in a pool will provide their designed lumen output 
as long as there is a minimum of 9.6 volts available at the light. Therefore, we do not need to worry about having too much voltage at the light, so all lights should be connected to the 14 volt leg. Now, as far as the coupler is concerned, if it is used, it has four additional wires, two on the high voltage side and two on the low voltage side. And of course, it is imperative that the wires be connected to the proper side. Finally, you will notice the bond wire that is connected to the bottom of the transformer. Just a reminder that you do not have to connect a bond wire here if the transformer is located more than five feet from the water's edge. Let's move now to the subject of retrofits. In the past, it has been against UL listing to install manufacturer ABC's light fixture into manufacturer XYZ's niche. This is because UL has not had the opportunity to test these light fixtures and niches together. Since part of their test procedure involves a millivolt drop test across the screw that holds the two parts together, to see how well the niche bond is transferred to the fixture, if they cannot test the two parts together, they cannot be listed to be installed together. Now, with the advent of the new LED non-metallic all-plastic light fixtures, UL is listing these light fixtures to be installed into any niche that they will fit into. This is a game changer. There has been a lot of confusion over the years about why you should not mix fixtures and niches. And some manufacturers have marketed light fixtures tested by another agency to be installed in any niche. So to help you understand this better, if you go to the IAEI website, www.iaei.org, and type the name Stephen Holmes into the search box, you will find an article that he wrote for the IAEI magazine in August of 2003 explaining the dangers of this practice. We suggest that you keep a copy of this article in your files for future reference. Is this practice reasonably safe? Probably. Is it absolutely safe? No. Is it a liability issue? Absolutely. If there was ever an accident in this pool, a good lawyer would study the pool from end to end, and if they found that the contractor had mixed fixtures and niches, which is against the UL listing, they would use it against the contractor in a trial. Now that the UCL LED light fixture is an exception to this UL listing restriction, we can tell you that the fixture can be safely installed into any of the niches you see listed on this page and you will find a listing of the part numbers of the various niches included in the packaging with the UCL fixtures. The UCL fixture will install into an existing niche just the same as the current fixture in the niche because it comes with a screw to hold it in place using one of two screw locations and one of two mounting clip locations to fit the various niches in the marketplace. The screw is metal but it just becomes part of the existing metal niche and it is not required to transfer the bond from the niche to the light fixture since the fixture is all plastic. One word of caution, the number eight bond wire on the outside of the niche and the number eight bond jumper wire on the inside of the conduit and niche must remain in place if the conduit is non-metallic. Now, if you are thinking that as an inspector, you will not become involved with retrofit installations, there is one possibility early on as contractors learn about this new light when you might. You could have a shell on the ground now with a bonded niche on which you have already completed a rough-in inspection. And when the contractor learns about these new lights, he decides that he wants to install them in this new pool. So you may go out for the final inspection and find that there is a Hayward UCL light fixture installed into another manufacturer's niche. With this new information about the new UL listing, you now know that this is an acceptable installation. Moving ahead with the subject of retrofits, there are two other aftermarket possibilities. First, there is already a 12 volt light fixture in the pool when the customer decides to upgrade to the Hayward UCL light. In this case, the new UCL fixture can simply be connected to the existing transformer via a junction box if present. Second, 
when there is a 120 line voltage light in the pool, if they have a UL listed swimming pool junction box for this light, Hayward has available new J-Box conversion kits to provide a 70 watt or dual 70 watt transformer to install inside the listed junction box. As noted previously, any time that we complete a retrofit, we do have to leave the existing number 8 bond jumper in place. If this line voltage light is connected to a switch all the way back at the pool service panel, then a new J-Box transformer or wall mount transformer will have to be installed. Before we look further at the retrofit transformer kits, we thought it important to bring to your attention the NEC article that requires swimming pool junction boxes to be listed for the application. We have found that many contractors and inspectors are not aware of this requirement. So the applicable parts of the article are listed here for you. As you see, Article 680.24 states that the junction box shall be listed for the application, shall be installed 4 inches above ground level and 8 inches above water level. And finally, just to make you aware, the code does allow for low voltage lights to be connected through a flush deck box which is no longer true for line voltage lights. This is one example of what a listed swimming pool junction box looks like. A brass base with three or, in some, four places to connect conduit, and then a polymer cover to go on top of the base. On the inside is a strain relief to capture the fixture cord and lugs for the bond and ground wires. There are also round, all plastic listed junction boxes in the marketplace with brass bus bars on the inside to make all of the necessary connections. Now look at this example. Does this meet Article 680.24? Obviously not. Or how about these junction boxes? Do they meet the code? Again, obviously not. This is an example of how GFCI protection used to be provided for high voltage lights using a GFCI receptacle inside the PVC junction box. However, NEC now requires that listed junction boxes be used for all swimming pool light connections. Therefore, you can no longer put a GFCI receptacle inside a standard PVC box and consider it an acceptable installation. Now, let's look at the J-Box retrofit kit. On the right of this picture, you see a standard brass base listed junction box. Then on the left side, you see the transformer, a possible coupler, and a taller cover for the complete assembly. As mentioned earlier, Hayward now provides retrofit kits for all of the primary listed junction boxes in the marketplace, as shown on this slide. Now let's look at the wiring of this J-Box transformer for retrofits or new construction. As you can see, there are only 14 volt leads coming from the secondary side of this class 4 transformer. So that is where the light will be connected. And then you have the high voltage connections coming in on the other side. As a reminder, if this is a retrofit, the number 8 bond jumper must remain if there is non-metallic conduit. See the note on the right side that reads, may also see coupler here? The ProLogic coupler snaps into place there, similar to the way a 9 volt battery snaps into place in a smoke detector. So if the customer opts for the ProLogic pool automation system, you would see one of these transformers and one coupler for each light, unless upgrading a 4 hole junction box for two lights and installing a dual transformer retrofit kit with one coupler for both lights. So in summary, since the Universal Color Logic and Universal Crystal Logic lighting systems, which is the white light only commercial model, are completely plastic low voltage systems, there is no need or requirement to bond the Hayward non-metallic niches specific to these lights. And for the first time, UL now allows these fixtures to be retrofitted into existing installations with listed niches that have already been bonded per the National Electric Code. These next two slides show the package insert that will provide you with the necessary documentation 
so that you know these lights meet the new UL listing and National Electric Code changes. On this slide, we show you the various UL listings that you will find on the UCL product line. First, fresh and seawater. Note, some product may say fresh water only, as old labels are used up. However, for swimming pools, UL's definition of fresh water includes salt pools with low concentrations for salt chlorine generators. Next, when properly secured, may be used with third-party niches. Next, use it 4 inch minimum depth to top of lens. And finally, for supply connection, use only a listed swimming pool spa isolating transformer. If you are in an area that has not yet adopted the 2008 or 2011 National Electric Code, this slide is asking that you please consider allowing these niches and fixtures to be installed in your jurisdiction without grounding or bonding as allowed by their UL listing and the National Electric Code. This slide shows the various models that are available. The switched residential model means that you control the light by a wall switch to turn it on and to choose one of the 10 predetermined colors or seven predetermined color changing programs. The networked model means that the lights would be controlled by the Hayward ProLogic pool automation system using couplers inside the transformers to access all of the 101 colors and 11 programs available or to design a personal color changing show. The low white light is the commercial equivalent to a 300 watt incandescent light and the high white is the commercial equivalent to a 500 watt incandescent light. Finally, the spa lights available are approximately equivalent to a 100 watt incandescent light. For additional information, please see the lights section on the Hayward Pool Products website shown here. If you have questions, please call your dedicated toll-free number listed here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. We hope that you found it worthwhile.